Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Every year, there are over 370,000 drowning deaths worldwide, with children under 5 being the most at risk. And with all the drowning deaths you see in movies and TV, it's no wonder that people are afraid of dying that way. But what's actually going on during that process? Well, firstly, drowning isn't like how you see it in the movies. There's not a lot of thrashing around or yells for help. Typically, it's a silent act, where the person's mouth sinks below the surface of the water and then reappears as they try to breathe. Once they can no longer hold their initial breath and start to hyperventilate, they might aspirate water, triggering something called a laryngospasm. This is where the person's vocal cords spasm, blocking their airways and protecting their lungs. However, it also inconveniently makes yelling for help significantly harder to do. Since the person can't take in any fresh air, their oxygen supply starts to fall, potentially leading to a condition called hypoxia. This is where there's not enough oxygen reaching the body's tissues, and eventually, as the person becomes unconscious, there's a relaxation of their airway, allowing their their lungs to fill with water. Depending on how long the person has gone without air, varying levels of damage can occur. For example, a 2013 study found that the likelihood of surviving with little to no brain damage was very low after being submerged for 10 minutes or more. The lack of oxygen can also lead to cardiac arrest. So basically what I'm saying is that drowning is absolutely terrifying, so please wear your life jackets, kids. They're cool and they'll keep you safe. I know I look fantastic in my floaties. On top of all of that, if the person is in really cold water, there's also the fear of hypothermia, where the core body temperature falls below 35 degrees Celsius. When hypothermia sets in, it'll cause the body to start shivering intensely, and the person might act clumsy or confused. Their bodies slow down, including their respiration, heart, and metabolic rates, and eventually they might lose consciousness and even die. Let's all take a moment to mourn the loss of Jack from Titanic, but come on, there was seriously enough room on that door for him too. While hypothermia is a serious threat, it may actually help to prevent the effects of hypoxia. See, it can trigger the diving reflex, where blood vessels constrict and the heart rate slows, and the blood is diverted to the parts of the body that need it the most, like the brain. Hypothermia also decreases how much oxygen is needed by the body's tissues, meaning that it can actually prolong survival and help prevent the tissue damage from hypoxia. In fact, hypothermia and the diving reflex is often cited as a big reason why some young children have been able to survive drowning after being under the water for far more than 10 minutes. That being said, do not try to replicate that yourself. It's definitely best to stick with those huge inflatable pool toys instead. I call dibs on the flamingo. Are you afraid of the water? What life-threatening situation do you want us to talk about next? This episode was a little bit morbid, so why don't we celebrate the fact that you exist? If you want to know the odds of you being born and how lucky you are to be alive, check out this video. See, in most cases, in order for you to be alive, your parents had to meet. Assuming that your mother could meet, let's say, one new person a day during her prime dating years, she would have met around 10,000 people. As always, I'm Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.